Johnson. That's July Johnson. During Missouri's gun season, Adam and Seth Harker took the Winchesters out to try to fill their tags. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Whitetail Properties, Blood Sport Arrows, Outdoor Edge Knife, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, House Lubricator Products, LEM Game Processing, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, Redneck Hunting Blinds. Missouri's firearm season runs for 11 days during the middle of November. This is a time in our region when the most does are receptive if you happen to be where receptive does are moving, it can be incredible hunting. We got off to a successful start during firearm season as my father tagged a coyote and a mature doe. As many of you know, my father's battling cancer and I was with him while he was getting his third chemo infusion while Adam was out trying to tag a buck. November the 18th here. <clears throat> November the 18th. Kai over here, Kai over here. Came around the bedding area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn on GoPros, turn on GoPros. Right here. I was doing my first interview in the morning when we were interrupted. Do you want me to smoke him? Sure. Okay, you good? Where's the other one? I'm all about being quiet, not talking loud, not making a lot of noise in the stand. But when one of those shows up, we're taking him out. Nice shot, Adam. That's one less fawn nabbing, turkey poult eating coyote here at the Proving Grounds. saw a few deer this morning, but the wind speeds are really starting to pick up. It's actually supposed to be gusting over 30 today. We figure the deer are going to be bedded down by now, so we're going to go check out the coyote. Male. Oh, it smells so stinking bad. It actually Wards canines down. It's got big long canines, but they're wore down. Looks to be a little older, older coyote. Well, turkey poults and fawns ought to be happy. Actually, all wildlife ought to be happy now. One less coyote to worry about. Even though we're always on the lookout for a hit list buck, when a coyote gives us an opportunity, we're not going to pass it up. Two summers ago, Adam and a couple of our interns were at Raleigh's field when July stepped out into the plot. We made the decision that July was a three and a half year old buck that year and would get a pass if we saw him that fall. Fast forward one year, almost to the week, and intern Kyle Karcher is in the same redneck blind and sees July step out into the plot eating Eagle Seed 4-H soybeans. During the summer, we knew he was now mature and would be on our hit list. We knew from the trail cameras that July's home range included a couple ridges here at the Proving Grounds. We had multiple stands and blinds in that area, and we assumed if we hunted smart and spent our time, one of us would get a shot at July. 
The next morning, Daniel and I headed into a stand overlooking the north slope of a power line. It's one of my favorite places to hunt during the firearm season. You can cover a lot of ground, enter, hunt, and exit without alerting any deer. They don't even know we're on the planet. Southwest corner, walking in the woods. Yeah. Alright, get as much footage as you can now, because if he steps out, I'm shooting before he gets in that grass. It was a beautiful morning. We were seeing a lot of deer, and after watching several deer on the far ridge, we noticed a buck move out. And after looking him over, we identified him as a buck we called July. Oh, wow, that is him going straight through the, by that cedar, isn't it? Yeah. He's really keeping his eye on something. We watched July move through the bedding area and down into the valley. He was definitely trailing something, and we knew there was a great chance that he would cross the power line in front of our stands. It's amazing. They don't even pay attention to orange vests. But in the spring, they can spot your bare skin like nothing. We continued to see deer throughout the remainder of the morning, but July never showed back up. Nice little two and a half year old. 26. I wonder where uh, July went. With cooler temperatures that afternoon, Daniel and I selected a plot we call Heidi Hole One and had hopes that deer would be feeding before dark. We heard the sounds of grunting and leaves crunching and caught right antlers now, moving man. through the brush right. headed to the plot. Daniel, it might be July. I think it's July. With all the thick cover, there's just no way for Daniel and I to get the gun and the camera on the buck, so we have to let him go. But we do see a little glimpse of his antlers and realize it's July. Unable to get a shot, we have to watch this buck walk off, but we were hoping we'd get another crack at him soon. The next morning, Matt and I headed into a redneck in North Boom food plot. This is just a great place to be with a southeast wind during the rut, so we had high expectations. Not long into the morning, the first deer fed across the food plot. The morning continued with just a few does crossing the back end of the food plot. However, it's the rut, so we knew a mature buck could step out at any time. Just then, Matt notices a buck step out on the food plot, so we're doing our best to figure out who he is. I don't know who that is. No, I don't. Is it? July Johnson. That's July Johnson. After a few steps into the plot, we notice it's July and it's go time. What do you think? We get the cameras rolling and the windows open, so now we're just waiting for the right angle to take the shot.
get him right. Yep, I think he's getting ready to go down right there. Oh, baby. You got him? Yep, I think he went down right there. Got a good line right behind that cedar. Take the shot. <laughs> I kind of want, I mean, he was just feeding on the broadside, so I kind of wanted to let him just Work, do his thing and get some footage, but he threw that head up and looked back. And you never know when a coyote or oh, yeah, something's going to show up. So I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Here we go with trying to stay calm and collected and not rush. I wanted to let him get broadside so I could punch it through both shoulders. Yeah. But seeing his head whip up and look back, I was more uh, worried about something spooking him. So definitely hit. We'll probably rewatch the footage. A couple times. A couple times. <laughs> a couple ten times or something. He stepped out. You said, Adam, deer. I leaned out and looked through the looked through the vertical window. I was like, yeah, that's a big body deer. It was. He stepped out there and I looked. I was like, are you kidding me? That's July Johnson. After having multiple encounters with July over the last couple of days, we finally sealed the deal. He's got probably, I don't know, eight inch tines, G2s, six inch G3s, but he's mature. He's got a big old body on him, big front shoulders. Now I realized it was July, the rest is history. Oh man, what a great deer. He's got a good mask to hold him to. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> you drag him and I'll just assist. Ugh. Got him out in the food plot for a better look. You can see back behind me the secret to our success. Of course, this is just a great travel corridor, but having the food plot here, we've got standing eagle seed soybeans, which is a little light brown strip you can see back behind me. And we drilled right through it with the eagle seed broadside. So we've got greens and standing grains. It's exactly why the buck was cruising through here, get a bite to eat before he went back to bed. I enjoyed hearing about these encounters and knowing Adam had closed the book on a great hit list buck. <laughs> well, we're always curious to see how well our equipment performed. This time we're going to check out the Deer Season XP. Here's the entry side. Not a lot of damage. Small entry hole, but that bullet's supposed to expand rapidly. So we're going to spin the deer around. Now that we've spun around, we're looking at the exit side shoulder. Side of the body, you can see there's a lot of trauma over here. Cut inside, here's our bullet. Obviously did its job. Went all the way through the deer, went through that front side shoulder, came over here and lodged in the very back side in the muscle of this shoulder. With all the traveling a buck will do during the rut, it's important to ensure there's high quality forage in the area. They need to regain weight before the winter. Adam wasn't the only one trying to write the final chapter on a hitless buck. Both Aaron Kicklider and Seth Harker had seen good bucks earlier this year and felt they could close the deal come rifle season. Aaron did the right thing. When he got to stand and knew the wind was wrong, he felt he'd put the odds in his favor and go somewhere else, even if it meant setting on the ground. Well, opening morning of Missouri rifle season. As you can see, we're sitting on the ground this morning. Unfortunately, had a couple summits set up here at the other end of this holler for north wind. Got down, got home late last night. Got in this morning, checked the wind, it was wrong. So we packed all the stuff back up, slipped around to the other end of this. South wind's in our face now. Kind of a bench coming out of this holler here, leading up to this sage grass field. A lot of does been run up in there. 
bumped a couple out a little bit ago, actually. So hopefully that didn't mess anything up. Uh, don't like sitting on the ground, especially in the rifle season when I kind of get up, see a little farther, but got my old Model 70. See if we can't let the wind out of a good one. Aaron played his hunch, as wise hunters often do, and moved over to watch a travel route. His hunch played out perfectly. During the rut, when mature bucks finish tending one doe, they often use travel routes to go seek another doe. I can see the buck laying down here. I, uh, I went back and got Aaron Harker. He's gonna help me film a recovery. We're gonna go down there, see exactly how big this dude is, get him dragged up here to the truck. I think it's the biggest deer I've ever killed. Uh, it's gonna be close either way, but good deer, no matter what. Could not be happier. Uh, probably the biggest deer I've ever killed. Came right down this little bench, running into a bedding area up here on this top in this field full of does this morning. He came around looking for does and uh, he saw him about 80 yards away. He got to probably 40, 45 and uh, put the old Winchester right through his shoulder and he didn't even run 40 yards piled up. And it's always a little bittersweet when you tag out opening day. Kind of anxious all year for these 10 days that we get here in Missouri to rifle hunt. But uh, I'm not going to turn it down by any means. Could not be happy. Good call, Aaron, and congratulations on a great buck. I wish the sun would go down so I could see better. Sure buck had showed up at a plot where Seth Harker had success during previous seasons. Seth and Chase had spent an afternoon watching this buck scent check the area from a distance, but they didn't recognize him as one of their hit list bucks. Since Seth didn't recognize the buck, he decided to name him the bonus buck. As the season progressed, Seth started chasing another buck he called Sub-Zero. Normally Chase White, Seth's filming partner, but that day, Chase had to work, and Seth wasn't gonna miss a prime November afternoon for hunting. Should be a great rut spot because it's November and it's hot. So, looking forward to tonight. I'd love to shoot one on a water hole. I've never shot a big buck on a water hole. Great evening. Six foot up a pine tree, literally six feet, maybe a little higher than six, but I'm not very tall, so the pine tree's about that bigger and round. The summit's tucked in here perfectly. My prime is ready to kill a big buck. I'm ready to kill a big buck. Let's do it tonight on the water hole. Anyone who's packed all the gear and tried to self-film hunt knows how much work it is. But even worse feeling is if you self-film a hunt but missed a shot.
go to auto. You already did. Thanks, Chase. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Anytime. If you're watching this, you saw the interview where I was really excited about killing my first buck on a water hole. And we did air on a buck on a water hole. I was self filming. And uh, for whatever reason, the record button didn't get hit. Maybe I got a little flustered with the big deer. Um, it's in Hollywood, so there's no take two. Um, it's happened. Um, so we're going to take up the trail. You got back that. <laughs> Look at that sound we got. He grew oh, now. That's 150. Oh my gosh, that's a good buck, dude. Dude, he's a truck. Look at that neck. <laughs> that's probably the biggest body. I bet that's the biggest body of deer. I mean. What's that some buck gonna score? Well, this is a bittersweet evening. We've got a deer here we call Sub-Zero on the ground. Um, it's bittersweet because we didn't get it on film. I'm kind of at a loss for words, but here he is. I'm ecstatic that we found him. He's a beautiful, beautiful buck. I am excited, but I am disappointed in the same breath. But this is a beautiful, magnificent buck for Southern Missouri. These double brows are just, just awesome. What a stud. Looks like he switched horns with a different buck. <laughs> Give me yeah. some, Trace. Man, I wish we'd have got that on film. You it was a great buck for Seth, but he was down on himself for missing the filming opportunity. Seth is never down long, and when firearm season opened, he was ready to head out and try it again. A big weather front was pushing through, so Seth decided to head out and go after the bonus buck. Just pulled into the property. It's raining. Radar says it's going to slack off. When it does, we're going to get the buggy loaded. If it does, we're going to get the buggy loaded, go up and try to kill a rainy day buck. Seth and Chase were once again unable to team up due to busy schedules, but Seth decided to put the odds in his favor this time and took along his Caldwell field pod so he'd be ready if a buck appeared. He built a small makeshift blind out of grass clumps which concealed him perfectly. It's November 16th, third day of rifle season. We're sitting on a hidey hole food plot. It's a rather large hidey hole food plot. It is in just an awesome spot. We've got bedding area all the way around us. We've got a perfect wind. This is where Trace killed his deer in youth season and I'm back because we keep getting southeast winds and we don't have a lot of stands set up for an easterly wind so I've taken clumps of this native grass or Indian grass whatever you want to call it and it's just set perfectly right in front of me so we're kind of hidden here it blows in the wind so I can kind of move I'm self filming by the way <clears throat> we've got the Winchester locked and loaded we've got several shooter bucks here the reason I'm on a food plot because I'm self-filming. If Chase was with me tonight, we'd be backed up trying to intercept him, but been raining, been nasty. They haven't been able to come out and feed, so hopefully one of these does is gonna drag a, one of our big shooters out, so ought to be an interesting night. Not long into the hunt, a few deer came into the plot. During this time of year, hunters know to be ready, especially if there's does in front of them. But Seth wasn't there long until antlers busted out into the field. It's the bonus buck, and Seth moves quickly to get the buck in frame and get the gun ready.
that was fast action. But that was, I'm just sure of it. That was the buck we call Bonus. And I'm telling you right now, that's right where he was standing when he was out of range for the prime. But guess what? He wasn't out of range for the Winchester 243. He wasn't out of range for that. It was fast. I knew not to let him, knew not to let him get to dogging that doe too much. But I seen her raise her head and it was game on. He came right over the crest. <laughs> Back to our roots. Yes. Oh, great. What a buck. Southern Missouri Ridge Runners. Oh, son. Wow, what a stuff. Look at those magnum brows. No, this is a deer whale. Winchester 243. Laid this poor soul to rest. <laughs> oh man, awesome. I can't be more thrilled. The bonus buck is down and this time it's on video. Nice job self-filming, Seth. Congratulations on another fine buck. Trapping season opened recently here in Missouri and we busted out the Duke traps. With fur prices lower than they've been in decades, many trappers simply can't afford to hit the field this fall. It's going to be up to us land managers to do the job of balancing predator and prey populations. We simply put them along our interior roads as we know predators use these as travel routes almost every night. In addition, we can run this trap line without doing almost any disturbance to the proving grounds. Duke cage traps work great even during hunting season because we can drop a few off on our road systems with minimal disturbance to the deer. We love to use tin cans to put our bait in. It keeps it dry and also is a curiosity factor when it comes to those curious predators. We like to use fish food or cat food because it's very cheap and it has a really fishy or meaty smell which predators love. We like to take just a little of our bait and toss it across the road and that allows a predator coming down the road to slow down and have a chance to smell the bait in our trap. Well we know that predators love to travel roads searching for food at night so we set our cage traps at a road intersection to double our chances of catching a predator searching for food. We have a great location, we have our trail, we have our bait. I'm going to throw the can in the trap and head on down the trap line. Trapping's not only a great wildlife management tool, it's a great family activity. Get yourself a couple of cage traps, some simple bait, take your kids out and teach them about predator-prey relationships and enjoy the value of fur. Not the money it brings, but tan them out, have them prepared and they make great decorations or gifts. I think it's a shooter. Matt and I had the opportunity to hunt during the last couple afternoons of Missouri's firearms season. Can you season. find him, Matt? And I gotta tell you, Are you on him? bucks can cross a power line rapidly. Are you on him, Matt? If he stops, I'm gonna take it. You're on him. And Here we go, Matt. The leaves are off here at the Proving Grounds and it's a great time to get outside and enjoy creation. But no matter what time of year it is, take time each day, slow down, and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. I need to call 195. Hold on. What is it? <laughs> wait for the, wait for the spring all the way down. Bear hugging. What's it say, Kyle?